Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Why Spend Money on Buddha Statue with subtitles from Sem. Um, I am not much of a believer in you having to buy like really, really expensive statues. I don't believe that does necessarily anything. Now don't get me wrong, if there's a nice statue that you want, you can afford it, that's fine. But you know, what regardless of the the cost of the statue, if the I think what's more important if the statue resonates with you. And what I mean by that, it's like if you ever looked at something, it's like, that looks really nice and I want it. Or I like looking at it. That could help you perhaps meditate. Like uh, when you have to fixate yourself on either a physical object, a noise, or something. You know, when you when you have to fixate your your attention on something. But, you know... I'm not exactly sure what he's going to go at in here, but hopefully it's not saying you have to spend a billion dollars on a statue. I mean, don't get me wrong, like he, when he talked about the, the, the beads, you know, he can say you can spend your money on anything and, you know, you can get the wooden beads and all that, which is honestly great. Well, let's go and give this video a shot. Buddhist images came into existence because there was a king in Sri Lanka who had invited the Buddha many times to come, but the Buddha was in, unable to entertain his request to go to Sri Lanka. So in lieu of him going to Sri Lanka, Lord Buddha had an image of himself made, and this was delivered to the king of Sri Lanka, who was very, very happy. When the Buddha's, when the Buddha's, when a being is fully enlightened, every aspect of their body and their speech and their mind is an imprint of an aspect of enlightenment for the uh, for the viewer. So that whether we hear the Buddha's speech, we see the Buddha's form, or we think about an enlightened aspect of a Buddha, it has tremendous impact on our mind stream and benefit. Hence, from that, you have large Buddha images all over the world. People who don't understand the benefits of an image of a Buddha will say, oh, it would be better if you put that money towards charity. Yes, it would be good to put it towards charity, but there's many levels of benefit. On the ultimate level, it's the blessings of Buddha's body, speech, and mind in a person's mind stream to eradicate their, their successive, uncontrolled births in suffering and samsara. Whereas if you do general physical charities for beings, it is beneficial, but it benefits them in that one life. That does not mean it should not be done, it just means there are different levels of benefit. So a Buddha's body, a Buddha's form, is something that was started by Lord Buddha himself, we are told. Therefore, there's a lineage. And when we make an image of an enlightened being, whether it's Buddha Shakyamuni, Tsongkhapa, Vajrapini, we are not praying to the statue, or the painting, or the sculpture, or the tsakale, or the tanka, or um, the tata, what the image represents is an enlightened being, and we are paying respects. We are making offerings and we are making connection through the image to an enlightened being. Some people say, Well, why don't you do it directly to an enlightened being? You can, but not everybody has that kind of ability to visualize an enlightened being, understand their nature, and to see it clearly in their mind's eye. So an image helps a person very much. An image is not vital, but it's helpful. So therefore, uh, when we have an image of a body, image of a Buddha, the body of a Buddha, it represents the paramutas. I'm sorry, it represents the fully enlightened aspects of the Buddha's mind. Every aspect of the enlightenment of a Buddha. <clears throat> therefore, when you make an image that is iconographically correct, then every aspect from the finger, toenail, fingernail, from the eyes, from the head, from the body, the posture, the gesture, the color, the um, uh, accoutrements, what they hold, what they wear, where they see, what they look, all represents a particular aspect of enlightenment, especially that deity and what they represent and how they bring you to enlightenment. Each deity, each Buddha, whether it's Vajrakini, Hiruka, Guya Samaja, Yamataka, they have a different way of bringing you to enlightenment. They stress different aspects of enlightenment. 
For example, Yamataka space is wisdom. In uh, 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 Samaja's case, it's dispelling an ignorance. In Vajabini's case, it's the uh, dissolution, destroying of desire, which is the root cause of samsara. So therefore, each Buddha stresses a particular path for you to become enlightened. And as you travel the path, all the other aspects of you that need to be transformed will follow along with it. It's like when the head of the when the head of the train goes, the body of the train will follow. All right. So in Vajrakini's case is arresting, controlling, purifying, desire, attachment. So therefore, when we have a holy image of Vajrakini like here, this is the, uh, producing kichara. Uh, when we adorn it, we are adorning it with the six different paramitas. So the different ornaments on Vajrakini, for example, her earring and her necklace, and her armlets, and her um, skirt, and all that represents the paramitas, including her body. Her body is a, is the sixth paramita. So by offering beautiful, precious items onto Vajrayukini, in this case, with a Vajrayukini, we are creating the merits. We are creating the causes. We are creating seeds <laughs> of obtaining and accomplishing the six paramitas. Is that possible without a Buddha statue? It is. Adorning a Buddha statue is not the only way, the only method to do this. There are many methods, but that's one of the ways. Hence, in Tibet, you will see, for example, the most holiest Buddha statue is Jorunji, which is a Shakyamuni statue that's heavily adorned by Lord Tsongkhapa over 600 years ago. And people today still make ornaments, ornamental offerings and gold on the face because it is um, um, something that is a prized spiritual practice making often to the Buddha. Now I'm glad he said that you don't have to do these kind of things. Um, I guess what would be the other method? And the next question I have is that he says you, you adorn it with stuff and like do you do that every day, every week? What happens with the stuff that you adorn it with? Does it just pile on or you know because I'm looking at the the image that he has here the um the golden image I see a few things on the um the statue I don't think it's a lot I think all, most look most of it looks like it's on there intentionally except for the perhaps the necklace and then the what looks like the cloth and I think that, that what looks like earrings in the front I think that's looks like it's meant to be there because it, it matches everything so like do they do they remove certain things every day and to bless or give offerings new offerings every so often i mean especially if you give like jewelry or something like that do you just keep it on there that's kind of what i'm wondering but also at the same time you know what what offerings are acceptable but hopefully it goes over that here so today we purchased um, custom jewelry, and uh, I cannot afford real gold and real silver and real emeralds, and real diamonds of magnitude. So I buy custom jewelry that are higher quality, and I visualize it as real gold, real diamonds, real emeralds, real silver, real uh, uh, rubies, real sapphire, lapis lazuli, and I offer it up to Buddha Portuguese holy body. So that's what I'm going to do now with all of you. And your help is to adorn Vajrakini's body with this. So earlier we went out to pass Buddha images to the wonderful uh, people out there in a, in a particular section of, of uh, Kuala Lumpur. And then we come back, we rest a little, and now we the next arm activity is adorning Buddha's body. Um, that's weird. Um, the reason why I say weird is because he said that he bought high quality jewelry and then he's going to imagine it to be something else than what it actually is. So it's not silver, not gold, not any kind of diamonds or, or stones. Why, why would you want to imagine it to be more than what it is? I, I mean, what's wrong with it for what it is? I mean, if that's the best you can afford or if that's something that you, I mean, want to offer up I, I'm guessing I, I don't know I guess I, I'm just I've, I've noticed this in some particular religions where 
they do offer up things to statues and stuff, but I've never... Well, I understood it, I guess, depending on what it is, like just basic offerings, petals or a little bit of food or something like that, then they, they wipe it clean because obviously food and certain petals are going to spoil or rot over time. But when you talk about jewelry or just precious metals and stones, why think of it as something of higher value? I, I, I don't understand that. It's not going to change the fact that it is what it is. You know, there shouldn't be anything wrong if if this is something that you you had something custom made and you like it. You made it specifically to um, to give as an offering. There shouldn't be anything wrong with what it is, because you you specifically created it or paid for it to be created in that fashion. I, f I find that kind of weird. And after that, if I'm not too uh, <clears throat> exhausted, I'm going to be blocking the biography of a very high level. So at least today, almost for the last 18 hours, it's been doing Dharma work continuously. And I think that's a good way of pressuring in the Lunar New Year. People think um, ushering a New Year should be celebrated with alcohol, getting drunk, champagne, getting dressed, you know, uh, parties and all that. For me, it's a little different. I think a good way to celebrate it is kind of uh, to do Dharma activity, to create the pauses for the rest of the year. Because for me, the Lunar New Year or the New or the Western New Year or the Chinese New Year, to me, it's just uh, not to be bleak, but one year closer to death. <laughs> so there's not much to celebrate because it's another year. We have well, one year less to live, like it says, but that was one year that you've survived as well. So uh, I guess it depends on how you look at it. I think it's worth celebrating. Why not? You know, new year, new celebration. Why not celebrate it? Who cares if we're one year closer to death? Why Why constantly worry about it? It's like you, you could think of every day as one day closer to death and every minute as one minute, one minute closer to death. Why celebrate that way? Why look at life that way? As a matter of fact, you never know when you're going to die. So if you're sitting there worrying about death all the time, it's going to be kind of <laughs> going to be kind of a miserable life. Don't get me wrong, don't do anything stupid. Just enjoy life. Try to. But again, keyword, don't do anything stupid like spend too much money or do really, really crazy stuff. You know, like skydiving <laughs> or bungee cord jumping. I don't know. Hey, it's up to you if you want to do those things. Be safe though. Less to live. Uh, we can do all the good prosperity wishes we want to the other person, but the fact is it's one year less of our life. So that's how I think about it. Uh, I'm not trying to be gruesome here or morbid, but <laughs> that's the truth, basically. Okay, so we have some beautiful objects. And um, can we have some incense? What incense? And to purify. Purify. Mm -hmm. Purify all of them. Good. Okay, let's go I'm not turning down his volume for for some reason he just got turned down. I wish they did it since the very beginning. Looks like we're trying to put the first piece on. Said this were custom jewelry that he had made. <clears throat> I 
So I guess I'll talk since you can't really hear him, but we can enjoy the uh, them putting it on. Um, <coughs> actually, I kind of have something like that. I wonder if I can show you. I wonder, I th did I already show I think I did show it to you guys. <coughs> I think I did. I did, but I guess I'll show it again. Uh, I kind of have something similar to this, but I don't really put jewelry on it. I put uh, something else that's a bit more meaningful to me. Kind of like you. How do you put it? You know. Oh, she's gonna. Oh, I wonder if that. I wonder if that gold statue then was actually may have not been a gold statue, but it's just so much uh, jewelry has been attached to it that's just. I mean, I guess like that maybe. I don't know. Like I wonder how again. Like I said, I wonder how often you do this. Every day, maybe once, if it's once a year, that'd be pretty good. Where you can buy one relatively ex decently <laughs> expensive jewelry to adorn it once per year. It seems very probable, and then something that you keep in the family, and um, <clears throat> something that you do as a family together and pass down from generation to generation. And I think could be a really cool thing to. I don't know, or. or or maybe like this, which is something that I kind of have, um, is the family members attach one jewelry to it, and um, so for every family member attaches a jewelry to it, so your father, mother, brother, sister, whatever, you yourself, and then your children will do the same thing, and then their children. So this is something that's kept in the family, and every individual jewelry represents a family member. I don't know, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I don't know if that's, maybe some do? Maybe, um, <coughs> um, I don't know. Oh, actually it looks really cool. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of, I guess, from the picture, it really does stick out. <laughs> I, maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, why didn't they put anything in the ear? It looks like there's a hole there for some earrings. It looks like they had some earrings, but... They just attach it to the um, the what well, looks like the pearls around the body. Oh, they they did they did. Okay. Good job. Oh, well, I guess they kind of got on the backside too. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, well, oh, I wasn't talking about. <laughs> it's a different color this time in the backside, is what I'm talking about. But it looks actually really nice. I mean, I wish I wish it explained a little bit more of the offerings and stuff. Again, I, I guess anyone who's familiar, let me know. Like, is it every day, every week, every year, every 10 years or so? And th is it does it have to be particular things? Does it have to be something of high value? Or is it just something that you offer? Um, so long as it's, it's a meaningful offer, regardless of the value. Because I, I would say that, to me, would seem to be um, the more important thing value in terms of um, from your from you 
and value meaning how much effort you put into something versus just how much it's worth. You know, buying jewelry is like, quote unquote, relatively easy. Whereas if you were to handcraft, like, you know, images or, or um, whatever it may be, handcraft uh, a decorative va uh, vase and then paint it yourself and offer it, I think that, I think personally that would be much more valuable to say a deity that says you put in a lot of effort into this than to say, oh, you bought this from the marketplace for a thousand, you know, <laughs> like, here you go, a thousand dollars. As opposed to someone who took time and effort to try to make something, of course. I don't think there's anything else. Oh. <clears throat> okay. I guess I really have nothing else to say other than um, other than that. It looks. It does look nice. They did a really good job in putting the. Um, the um the um what you call it the jewelry on there again let me know about my questions there i guess that's all i have to say okay if you like my content please consider thanks for watching if you like my content please consider subscribing thumbs up thumbs down down below thanks for watching again uh, i'll see you in the next vid